Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer. In this lesson we're going to take a look, much like we did in the last couple lessons for different applications, at creating the Michael Bay film look, but this time we're going to do it a little bit differently. In the last couple lessons we looked at creating it inside of a compositing application, but in this lesson we're going to take a look at creating this very cool effect right inside your Avid Symphony timeline. Now I need to break this tutorial up into two parts and in part one I'm going to show you how we're going to do this inside of Symphony. In part two I'm going to show you how we're going to do this inside of Media Composer. Now of course I say Media Composer and Symphony. I could also be referring to Media Composer and Media Composer with Symphony options depending on which version you're using. But the most important part about this whole lesson is the fact that we're not going to leave the comfort of our non-linear editing application to create this cool effect. Okay. Short introduction here, let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt and Tab into Avid's Media Composer, obviously Command and Tab for all my Mac friends out there. And now to do this lesson, we're going to need to use Boris Continuum Complete 8. Now I know you're thinking to yourself, well hang on a second Cav, you know I didn't make that investment, you know that's a lot of money, but you know something? You did make that investment. What do you mean Kev? Well, you made that investment when you made your purchase of Symphony or Media Composer with Symphony Option. Why? because you get Boris Continuum Complete absolutely free. All you have to do is make sure that you downloaded the software once you made your purchase, installed it, put in the serial number, and basically you're all set to go. So let's move on. The first thing we need is some footage to work with. So what I'm going to do here, so I'm just going to choose a clip from Digital Juice's Video Tracks HD. We'll just go with the same clip I've been using in the other tutorials here. I just need to open the bin that I'm going to work in and let's create a new sequence. We've got the entire clip marked, but just in case we didn't, we could simply select the clip, hit T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows, and then hit B to drop it into a new timeline. I'm just going to drop it into the Creative Cow bin. I'm going to simply say OK. And now let's get in and let's adjust the color of the clouds first. Now most people think to get in and do something like that, what we're going to do is we're going to add saturation to the shot. What I'm going to do is simply hit Control and 8 on Windows, Command and 8 on the Mac. I'm going to head up to the image section. I'm just going to choose the basic color effect here. I'm going to drag and drop it onto my shot. I'm going to step into effects mode. Now of course my shortcut for effects mode, I know you all know it, so sing along, is Shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have it mapped to your keyboard, of course you can simply find it right over here at the top of your timeline. Now all I'm going to do is inside of the effects editor with the color effect applied, I'm going to come in, I'm going to come to the chroma adjust the saturation, just crank it way up, and of course the same problem we've run into inside of compositing applications and editing applications alike, sky gets very blue, clouds and my talent get very yellow and it's just very not nice. Now most people say, well Kev, you know what, you're using you know, Symphony, why don't you get in to do some fancy color correction in there? We're going to be getting to color correction with the Symphony option in a later lesson. I just want to show you right now the simplest way to get in and add some blue to the sky. What we're going to do is we're going to add a blue solid to our timeline. Now most people think, oh okay, well Kev, well, what are you going to do? You're going to go out and go to Photoshop and create it there and then import it? Not going to do any of that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to navigate up to Clip. We're going to come down to New Title. I'll give Media Composer here a second to open up the Title Tool. I'll simply say Title Tool. All I'm going to do here with the Title Tool open is simply switch the background off. So instead of having a video background, we're just going to have a, a solid color. I'm just going to call up my swatch here. And let's just choose blue, just for argument's sake here. Why not? Let's just close this up. We'll say Save. Of course, we'll call this blue. We'll send it to the Creative Cow bin, which I should call Sequences. Why don't we just do that here? Come to the Creative Cow bin. We'll call this Sequences. And I'm going to come down and let's just make sure that I name my sequence here. Instead of calling it Untitled, we'll just call this Michael Bay Film Look. Okay. And like I said, we now have our blue solid. I'm simply going to mark an endpoint anywhere in it. Doesn't matter where it is. Let's create a new video track. Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. And let's simply mark the entire duration of the sequence. Again, T on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. B to drop in my blue layer. Now what we want to do is we want to get in and add a transfer mode. Now I know you're thinking to yourself again, well Kev, we don't have transfer modes inside of Avid's Media Composer. Ah. But with the inclusion of Avid Effects and with Boris Continuum Complete 8, you actually have access to it in two different ways. We're going to get to how you're going to access that in Avid Effects in the second lesson. But for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to the Effects Palette. We're simply going to come right back up here to our Keys and Blends, and I'm simply going to choose a Composite Effect. I'm going to take that, 
drag and drop it right down here in my title. You're going to see my title is going to get to be a darker blue color, which is not what we want. Again, step into effects mode, shift and Y is my shortcut. There we go. And what we want to do first of all is to tell the effect to apply it to a title or mat. Now you'll see as soon as I do, we now have a transfer mode occurring onto this footage, but unfortunately it's a hard light transfer mode or an apply mode in this case. What we want to do is simply drop that down. We're going to come down to overlay. There we go. Very nice. And we're going to set the overlay to be about 40, I think. Uh, even there's not too bad. And what I'm going to do here is just put our color here at full and our image quality at full. There we go. Looking very, very nice. Now what we had before looked something like that. What we have now is something that looks like that. The sky is a much bluer color. But what we want to do now is we actually want to come in and separate our basketball player from the background because we obviously want him not to be the same blue color as everything else because that kind of defeats the purpose of what we're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new video layer, Control and Y in Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. Let's just select our entire Video Tracks HD clip. I'm going to hit Alt and C on Windows, Option and C on the Mac to call our clip into the clipboard here. And now we're just going to select the topmost video layer. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to drop that clip in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo this track. Now to solo the track is very easy. Control I hold down Control and Windows, Command on the Mac. Simply click on your little monitor, your little viewer here. And now the only thing you're going to be viewing is that specific layer and nothing below it. Reason being is because I want to get in and I want to do a chroma key effect. Now in this case, what I can do is I can actually just use the standard luma key. And it's actually a luma key, not a chroma key that I want to use. So let's come to our luma key. I'm simply going to take it, drag it right down here, drop it onto my shot. You'll see it's already doing a half decent job as it is here. So what I want to do is come in and just adjust the gain a little bit here, just kind of like that. That's pretty darn good. And what we want to do, just want to soften it up a little bit. Now you'll see as soon as I do that, we start to get a little bit of garbage back here. Not a big deal. You see we can just make another minor modification to the gain here. We'll just get it pretty close because what's important to keep in mind is that what I could do, I can now just come and simply invert the key to get the key exactly the way that I want. What's important to keep in mind, like I said, you'll see that this is not the greatest key of all times. But I did create this using the standard uh, Luma key here, and this shot actually has a lot of compression on it. So what I could do, obviously, like I said, use the standard Luma key, or what I can do, just simply remove the effect. What we're going to do is come back to the effects palette. We're going to come back up to the Boris Continuum Complete Effects. Let's go to Keys and Blends. We want to come down to Linear Luma Key, just like this. Drag and drop. Take a look at how simple that is. Now we can just adjust the threshold back, just like that. We just get a little bit of bleed over on the shoulder, which is okay. Let's just soften this up a little bit. And let's come back now. And the most important part of what we have going on right now, you'll see that we are set the key type to be Key Type Key Out Darker. We actually want to key out brighter just like that. See still a little bit of garbage up there in the upper left. We can just adjust the threshold to get rid of that. And what we have now, once we soften this up a little bit more, you'll see as we soften, we start to get this in the upper left and upper right. So we can just kind of find the happy medium here. I think that's pretty darn close because what I can do now, as soon as I turn off the solo of this layer, you'll see my basketball player is now on top of the background. Now, the only problem with doing things the way I did is we get a little bit of blue bleed over right here, which I'm okay with for the purposes of what we're doing. Because, you know, we might actually get that when we're shooting this out in the field, but you'll see I can simply hit play here. All these effects are playing back in real time. Very, very nice. Now this would be cool if I wanted to just do a general enhancement to the sky, sort of everything in it, but I want to make the top part even darker or even sort of a more blue color in this case. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new video track, Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. Again, what we're going to do, we're just going to move this layer up one layer just like such, and I'm going to take this blue layer here, and I'm just going to duplicate it. We're going to select the whole clip, T on the keyboard, Option and C on Mac, Alt and C on Windows. And we're just going to drop this right up here, just like such. And let's isolate this blue, because we can see all the blue right here. And what I want to do in this case is I actually want to crop this off midway. And believe it or not, we can actually do that right from within the effect itself. I can simply come right down here to Geometrics. We can come right down to the bottom here to Crop, and we can crop the element right here.
Now, of course, the only problem with this is that I don't have exactly the, the finite control that I need over this mask because I'm going to want to get in and make some feathering adjustments that I really can't do as well as I want to inside of the effects. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come down to our timeline. I'm just going to double click on the clip while I'm in effects mode to take a look at what we have inside of this nested effect. Well, I've got a layer called blue and then I have the alpha information, which in this case there isn't any. But what I want to do is I actually want to come right back up here to the effects palette. I'm just going to scroll down to the key section and what we're going to do is we're going to choose uh, animat here. I'm going to take animat, we're going to drag and drop it right down here onto that blue element. You'll see actually what we want to do is not drag it onto that blue, we want to drag it onto the blue that's nested inside just like such. Once I have it applied, what we actually want to do is step back out a little bit, but you'll see that with Animat, I don't have the zoom in and zoom out controls. Now you might have them mapped to your keyboard, I don't because I don't use them very often unless I'm actually doing effects work, and in most cases, they're actually located right there. So all I'm going to do now is simply mask out the top part of this element. We'll just mask it down to about there, and what we're then going to do is just feather it out a lot. You'll see now that we can get in, just sort of adjust this really kind of get it looking how we want. You'll see that we sort of got the top, you know, half to a third of that screen blocked off. So I'm happy with this in the way that it looks now. So now what I can do is simply turn this element on just like that. And what we have now is we now have a bluer top part of the screen than we do a bottom part just like such. Now what we can do is simply step back up one and there's our basketball player now standing over a very nice blue sky with an even darker top part of the screen just to really make that blue stand out. But what if I wanted to get in and adjust that blue color? Is there an easy way to do that? Well, there's actually a couple ways that we can do that. The first and easiest way is to simply get in and adjust the color of the title. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new video layer. I'm going to hit Control and Y on Windows, Command and Y on the Mac. We're just going to drop this title into our timeline here. And what I'm going to do then is right click and simply say Edit Title. Once the title tool opens, I'm just going to adjust the color to be something like red. Why not? I'll just choose red. Why? Well, because I can. There we go. We're just going to save this out. There we go, there's red. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down to our layer here. First of all, we're going to come down to this layer right here that has our effect with the crop on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the actual effect itself, the BCC composite effect, and I'm going to take it and drag and drop it right down here onto the red solid. Now you'll see if I come all the way to the top, everything is now red. Well, that's not what we want. Wow, well, well, remember, we actually need to get in and apply our animat effect as well. Now what I'm going to do is just take it, I'm going to drag it out into the bin just because I can't have both of these nests open at the same time. What I'm going to do now is simply take it, I'm going to apply it to that graphic fill and take a look at what we have now. We now have that red only on the top part of the screen and what we want to do now is simply copy this into the clipboard, Alt and C on Windows, Option and C on the Mac. We're now going to come down to the topmost blue element here we're simply going to paste it in just like that and take a look at what we have now. We now, i got to make sure I remove that top element here, just like such. But we now have our basketball player standing. You'll see this doesn't play back quite in real time, only because we actually have our three effects here plus one nested effect. But what we basically have here, and I'll just render the topmost layer, that's okay here. You're going to see that it's going to render pretty darn quick. Probably about 11 seconds here. What you're going to see when it's done is we've now created a very cool Michael Bay film look right within our Media Composer timeline. And the cool part is, is that it was very, very simple to do with a little forward thinking and the power of your Avid Media Composer. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.